OK, so today's workshop is about working with digital images in IIIF format. First, I will uh, tell you a bit more about um, why um, I can't seem to control these. Oh, why um, Monk has created a workshop on these digital images. So Monk is a project by Public Library in Bruges, and um, we are a public library and a special collections library. And we have uh, a beautiful medieval collection of about 600 medieval manuscripts and about 75 in Cunebula. And we do a lot of projects with this collection, uh, both offline and online. Some examples of our digital projects are a project that we finished recently on Europeana. It's called The Art of Reading in the Middle Ages. We are also a partner in the project Medieval Manuscripts in Flemish Collections, uh, where we aim to collect descriptions of all of the manuscripts in Flemish collections. And then there's Monk. So we started working on Monk in 2018. And as I suppose many of you by now already know, the aim of Monk was to unite all of the surviving manuscripts of four Flemish abbeys, abbeys which you see on the screen, um, on an online website. We've identified 823 manuscripts from these four abbeys, and today they are kept at 45 institutions in Europe and North America. The bulk, the large majority of those manuscripts are kept at the uh, four partner institutions of Monk. So Bruges Public Library, Bruges Major Seminary, Ghent University Library and Ghent Diocese. But um, about 130 manuscripts are kept in 41 collections in Europe and North America. And these are these external collections. Um, now the classical way to to work on a project like this would be to try to gather all of these images of manuscripts and all of the metadata, so the descriptions, um, to buy images or to ask for images, and then to um, download them and then uh, put them online on a website. But we wanted to build our website in a different way, and we wanted to use a new technology or a digital innovation called IIIF. Now, what is IIIF? The situation now is often like this. Um, institutions use isolated systems for digital images and for metadata. So they store the data on local servers, they manage the data in local systems and catalogs, and they publish the data on local websites. And there are a lot of problems with this situation. For instance, the um, data is isolated and there are borders between the institutions and the collections. It's also expensive for institutions to work this way because um, th the systems are customized, so made for each different institution. And every upgrade costs a lot of money and you get something that's called a vendor lock-in syndrome. And for end users, it's also complicated because, for instance, when you're working with um, items from five different institutions, from Ghent, Oxford, Paris, Chicago, Sevilla, etc., more often than not, you will have to open five different websites, use five different viewers to look at the manuscripts, and they all have different functionalities, different rules, different settings, etc. It's very uh, time consuming and very frustrating for end users. So how does IIIF solve this? IIIF takes the images and the metadata and pulls them out of their local systems. So IIIF actually wraps the data in a uniform packaging written in a computer language that's called JSON, JSON code. And the packaging is called a manifest. The JSON code follows a set of standards that is internationally agreed upon by everyone in the community. And so it's uniform and it's universally uh, readable by both by machines and humans. And with this manifest, we can pull the data and the images out of their isolated silos. The IIIF community on top of that has developed free tools and applications to work with these images, like viewers and tools to build exhibition, etc. So now you can pull off all of this data from their local uh, systems and start working with it. So it makes the data interoperable. IIIF stands for 
international image interoperability framework. So it makes the data interoperable. So you can pull information from Ghent, from Cambridge, from Paris, Chicago, and maybe combine it in a beautiful exhibition. And another benefit of IIIF is that it can help us to reduce our carbon footprint. The carbon footprint of digital humanities can be really high um, because there is a lot of duplication, a lot of unnecessary and IIIF can help to avoid some of those unnecessary downloads. And we will see some examples of how you can do this later on in the workshop. So back to the Monk project, we used all of these manifests to collect images and metadata, and that's how we built our Monk website. So we've built a searchable collection with manuscripts, with items from all these different institutions. This actually freed up some time and some budget to work on editorial content and educational content. So we made thematic collections with manuscripts, for instance, by certain by Abbots. Uh, we made a lot of virtual tours with IIIF tools, and we encourage our audiences to create their own tours. Um, we also made educational videos. We actually also asked young artists to create, to take, come into the library and take a look at the manuscripts and to create artworks inspired by the manuscripts. That was really nice. Um, so we target different audiences, like the one we have today, Monk School. Um, we also work for children, so we made learning scenarios, we made videos where children share their thoughts on medieval manuscripts, so that's really nice. It doesn't always have to be the expert's perspective, it's really nice to get some fresh ideas. So that's how we started working with IIIF and how with this project we uh, gained some experience with um, IIIF from the point of end users when you want to create um, communication tools. We created this workshop um, with uh, some five tricks, five basic tricks. So first I will uh, tell you how, where, how and where you can find a manifest URL. So this URL will be the key to pull all of the data from the local systems. Um, we will see how you can share a detail on an image. We will compare objects in one single viewer. And then if there's enough time, because as I said, this usually takes two hours, we will create a virtual tour or a quiz and perhaps embed a, a viewer on a website. So now I would uh, like to ask you all to go to this URL um, and I will also put it in the chat. Um. I've put the URL in the chat. I'll switch screens again. This time I'm going to my browser. Okay. Can you see my screen? I can't see you, so if someone can just say yes. Yes. Yes, thank you. Okay, so the about the workshop. We've covered that, IIIF in a really tiny no, uh, nutshell. If you want to find out more about what IIIF is, you can find more information on our Monk website. And here are some benefits. You can look at all of that at your own pace. So good to know before you start. Um, this is going to be a hands-on experience, so um, there will be some assignments and uh, if you want to participate in those, if you want to start creating uh, some, some things with IIIF, I very much encourage you uh, to do so. So um, before you start, it's always good to bookmark this page because will refer to external websites and we'll be switching back and forth. Uh, and that way, if you've book bookmarked it, it's easier to find your way back. Then I'll just repeat that manifest URLs are the key to work with objects in IIIF. So every object that is available in IIIF will have a manifest URL. But just a quick reminder, not everything is available yet in IIIF. So if you're working on a specific manuscript, on a specific painting or whatever, it is possible that 
that institution doesn't support IIIF yet. Let's hope they will soon. Okay. Um, so about the, the views of about the tools and the websites, there are on the one hand viewers, so they are designed to consult manuscripts. We'll take a look at Universal Viewer and at Mirador. And then there are tools to create uh, guided viewings or exhibitions, virtual exhibitions, and we will take a look at the exhibit tool. There are other tools. If you're interested in finding out more about those, you can consult this list on the website of the IIIF Consortium. So the first thing we need to do is to find a manifest URL. And I'll start by showing some examples uh, from catalogs. So chances are that you've already seen manifest URLs, but maybe you didn't rec recognize it or you didn't really know what to do with it. So for instance, in our catalog in Bruges, if you go to the catalog and you look at the record of an, uh, an item, you'll have underneath the header details, it has the description of what the object is. And then underneath Bekeke Online, so view online, you'll find the IIIF manifest. Kent University, uh, same. It's um, if you go to the record of the item, details has the description, and then you have to go to the header for developers, and then you'll find it among all of the other links. So here, this is a manifest URL. This is Gallica website with the digital images of the Bibliothèque Nationale de France. Um, they have a huge amount of items in IIIF. If you want to find a IIIF manifest, you'll have to open the item in their viewer, then click on the information icon, and then scroll to the bottom of the metadata and underneath the header, header links, you will find the manifest. This is an example from the Getty Museum. Again, uh, in the object description, if you go to the header, they, they've listed it underneath APIs and other identifiers. And then you go to IIIF and they have um, the logo. So by now you've understood that uh, every institution uh, tackles this in a different way. But now that you know what you're looking for, it's easy. Um, just look for the words IIIF uh, or the logo. Another example from the museums in Bruges, they have it under linked open data, IIIF manifest. So you'll also see that the manifest always has the words manifest or manifests, and often also IIIF. This is the Library of Congress. Um, there it's at the very bottom of the record, IIIF presentation manifest. There you have to click on it. This is another interesting resource, Irish script on screen. Here you can either find it in the Gallica way. So go to the viewer, click on information icon and then underneath uh, links. Or they have made it easy for us. They have this uh, button that says IIIF manifest. So there it's very obvious. This is IIIF uh, collection or collections by Biblissima. Uh, we'll come back to that later, but there you can see the logo and the manifest. And this is from Monk. We have chosen to put it underneath the viewer, IIIF manifest and the logo. So if you click on one of those links, this is what you will see. You will see JSON code. Don't worry, don't panic. You don't need any of this. What you need is the URL and you'll just want to select and copy this. This is the only thing you need. So don't worry about the code. Okay. So um, here are some examples of manifests. So this is from Ghent University. It has the word manifests. Uh, it has the word uh, the acronym IIIF. Same for Bodleian, uh, Leiden. So this is what you're, what you're looking for. If you're interested in finding some ser search strategies for specific institutions, I've listed some of them here. And you can also consult the list on the IIIF website. There are some interesting worldwide initiatives uh, with IIIF resources. We've seen Irish script on screen, so they've built a collection with IIIF manuscripts. Same for Fragmentarium, same for e codices, etc. And then there's Biblissima IIIF collections. And this is a very good starting point if you're interested in working with manuscripts or rare books. So they have created a database with about 90,000 
manifests. So I'll just scroll through this. What you can this is what you can find. So Gallica, BVMM, uh, Bodleian libraries. I'll, I won't read them uh, out loud, all of them, but you can see this is a, a fantastic resource and a fantastic starting point. Yes, this is Monk here. A fantastic starting point for uh, manuscript studies. Just be aware that it's not exhaustive yet. They they try to be exhaustive, but it's it's uh, evolving at such a rapid pace that um, that it's not always up to date. So let's say I'm interested in um, Boethius, because why wouldn't you be interested in Boethius? Um, this is the result. So they have 346 uh, items uh, related to Boethius, and all of them have manifests. So you can either um, click on uh, you could you can dra drag and drop but we won't do this in this workshop uh, you can view entry and then scroll down and here's the logo and there you go this is the manifest the only thing we need is this okay so this is a fantastic resource i cannot um um Stress this enough, Biblissima is a fantastic research uh, research portal. Um, OK. So for this workshop, I've created a list with some interesting manifests. Let's take a look at those. Um, so it, the workshop was created with manuscripts. It was the monk workshop, but now I'm expanding it a bit to uh, other types of media. So what can you find in IIIF? What is out there? What is available? So a lot of books because IIIF is very much initiate, initiated by the book community, but also paintings, textiles, sculptures, uh, incunabula books, coins, drawings, engravings, maps, natural history, printed ephemera, decorative arts. Um, and there's there's even more than this. And then if you take a look at the variety in institutions, just to give you an idea of how widespread IIIF is, so how useful it can be to you, we've got Brugge, the Groot Seminari, that's by a monk, The Hague, um, we've got the Groningen Museum in Brugge, we've got the Victoria and Albert Museum, Fitzwilliam Museum in Cambridge, the Harvard Art Museum. So these are huge collections. Huntington Library, uh, our beautiful library in Bruges, uh, the Bibliothèque Nationale de France, uh, Art Institute of Chicago, the Municipal Museums of the City of Paris. So that's also a wonderful resource. Qatar National Library, the Natural History Museum in Denmark, Library of Congress, UCLA, Tokyo National Museum. And then if we're looking at the manuscripts, the Vatican Library um, supports IIIF, Utrecht um, University, Leiden University also, Bridge Library, um, et cetera, et cetera, uh, Cambridge Corpus Christi. So it's really widespread and um, very, very, uh, growing right now. So you can use this list uh, when we've, we're working on assignments. You can select one of these items if you want. OK, the first um, the first uh, trick will be. So you're working on a manuscript and you're interested. Uh, you're browsing through a manuscript and you see a wonderful detail, for instance, this cyclope. And you want to share this specific detail, this specific miniature with a colleague, or you want to bookmark it into one of your files or save it for another moment. Instead of making a, a print of your screen and then maybe cropping it and saving it on your computer um, and then maybe sending it to a colleague or whatever, you can share this detail with a simple URL. How do we do this? I'm just going to walk you through the steps and then if you want, you can do the assignment uh, at your own pace. So um, for instance, I'm going to click on this one, this manifest URL. I select the URL and I copy it. Kopieren in Dutch. OK, so I've got the URL and now I'll go to Universal dot io this is one of the two most popular viewers for triple if so this is an independent viewer it's not related to an institution or whatever this is created by the community by developers and by uh, experts 
if you scroll down a bit, it says view a IIIF manifest. I will paste the manifest here and hit view. This is a beautiful manuscript from the Groot Seminary in Bruges. And let's see. I would really like to zoom in on this detail. Let's close the gallery here. I want to zoom in on this detail and I want to share this because I'm really interested in headdresses and I know someone else who wants to see this. Take a look at this URL, the URL here on top. Take a look at the, these four coordinates in the URL. They will change while I'm zooming out and zooming in. So these four coordinates represent the location, the specific target on this image. And that's why if I share this URL, I'm going to copy it, copy it in, and I'm going to open it here. It should lead me to exactly the same detail, you see? Okay, let's close this here. Oh, uh, what just happened? Okay, there's my screen. Um, refresh. Okay, there the detail is the beautiful headdress. So you can uh, copy and paste this URL, or you can do it properly, hit the share button, and then copy this, this URL. So that's the same, I'm copying it. And um, I'll go, I'll put this in the chat and then you can see for yourself, this will lead you to that detail. So now if you would like, we'll take a few minutes to do this first assignment. You're all manuscripts people, so let's do the manuscript assignment. I would like you to Take this URL, so you'll click on it. You, you will copy the uh, URL, the manifest URL. Then you'll open Universal Viewer and paste the URL into the viewer. And then you can see if you can find the coat of arms of Abbot Jan Krabbe. Zoom in on it and then uh, share the URL with us in the chat. If you want, you can obviously also do assignment number two on the painting uh, by Jan van Eyck. So give it a try and share your results in the chat. If you have any questions, um, don't hesitate. Um, so Lucy, you can open the website. Um, I've shared the link in the chat. You can open the website and go to the, the, the Monk Workshop website. Um, and there you can you can um, see all of the information. Okay, I'm seeing some results in the chat. It's, uh, it's not an exam, but I'll just open uh, the one sent by Tom. Let's see if it works. Did you find the coat of arms? 
Yes, well done, 10 points. Bob, what did you send us? Ah, yes, the bird. Okay, nice. Okay, so um, I'll move on. I think um, uh, everyone um, is on board with this. Uh, are there any questions? Can I help? Can I assist? Or is everything clear? Okay, I'll just move on. If you have any questions, uh, you can always contact me afterwards. Um, so that was a way to share a detail. This is really something I use on a daily basis. It's really useful in uh, communication, in my research. So um, you can text a doc, uh, you can write a document and uh, say, okay, uh, the Cyclops on folios, this and this, in manuscript, this and this, and then hyperlink the word Cyclops or whatever you want to refer to, or hat or parakeet, and then hyperlink it with this URL uh, behind it. So that's fantastic. So um, you can also bookmark the URL and maybe uh, store it in a file that says beautiful headdresses or uh, wonderful creatures or whatever. So you can see this is an, a beautiful way to avoid unnecessary downloading. The next trick will be to compare objects in another viewer called Mirador. So Let's get back to the situation uh, that I mentioned in the introduction. I'm interested in uh, five objects or three objects, but they're all in different institutions. And I do not want to switch back and forth between those institutions' websites. I can, um, with the manifest URL, pull them out of their silos and open them in one single uniform form viewer. And that viewer is Mirador. So what I just showed you before, the targeted location on an image, only Universal Viewer can do that. And comparing objects, that's something that only Mirador can do. So they both have their strengths and weaknesses. Um, so how do you compare items in uh, Mirador? I will, I will walk you through it again, so you can just watch my screen and then you can try it uh, afterwards. First, I will open the Mirador Viewer. It looks like this. It already has two items set up, but I will close these windows because I want to start working in my own workspace. And then I will select two manifests. Um, let's take this one. Then I'll go to start here start here and what you see here is your resource library so it's already filled with some items items by the creators of mirador but we don't want to use any of those we want to work with our own item so i'll say add resource so at the bottom here you have add resource and then i'll just paste the manifest and i'll click add and it appears here has von het book i'll open it so this is the first manuscript. In this viewer, I can just browse through the manuscript like this, regular viewer. I can also look at the gallery. That's really useful. Or I can combine both, I have the viewer and the gallery at the bottom. So let's click on this one. I want to see this folio. Okay. But that's just one manuscript. I want more items. Let's see. Um, I have no idea what I'll pull up. It's a completely unrelated manuscript, um, but it's just the idea. Okay, so plus add resource, plus add resource, paste the URL, add, and it appears here. I'll click on it and it opens in my library. And then I'll just go to gallery and open beautiful Luxo script. Okay. They happen to be completely unrelated, but you can you can see how this can be really um, sorry, really interesting 
if you want to compare scripts or if you want to compare iconographic compositions, um, et cetera, et cetera. You can add as many slots as you want. At some point, obviously, it will be too small to see. Um, what's really interesting here as well is that you still have access to all of the metadata. So you have this rich context in which the manuscript lives. Same here. OK, so that's how you can compare images. Um, if you, uh, sorry, I'm switching back and forth. Um, OK, so when you're done uh, for the day and you, you want to continue to work on this collage tomorrow, it's really important to know that in Mirador, you cannot log in and create an account and save your workspace. But what you can do is go here to the three dots to workspace options. And say export workspace. So this configuration is like this. It's code and you can just copy it. And then do something old school like um, paste it in a Word document or a notepad. And then tomorrow, if you want to continue working on this, I'll just close this. Tomorrow I can start with a fresh workspace and then I can import this workspace. So I'll just copy the code, import, and there you go. Um, so that's really useful. Now I have an assignment for you. You can either, and I think this is uh, very, uh, interesting in, in, in light of the second session today, you can do the first session on the Liber Floridus or perhaps just, uh, no, let's all do the one on the Liber Floridus. It's uh, relevant today. So what we want to do today is to compare two copies of the Liber Floridus manuscript, one at Ghent University Library, 12th century, and one at Chantilly, uh, 15th century. I have the two manifests here. So I would like you to open these in Mirador, so you can follow all the steps that are written out here. And um, since they are two copies of the same manuscript, you will see that they have a same similar iconographical program, and maybe you can uh, find similarities and uh, in the miniatures and put them next to each other. So I'll let you work on that for a second. If there are any questions, uh, please uh, raise your hand or shout out. So by now, you might have seen that it takes a while for the images of the Chantilly manuscript to open, or is that uh, not a problem? It is quite slow. <laughs> <laughs> That's always the case, but I prefer to keep this example in um, because this is uh, tells us something about IIIF. So all of these images are stored at IIIF 
servers by the institutions. And what we're doing now is we're pulling up those images from those local IIIF servers. And some servers are better, better than others. So it can happen. It will also happen when you're looking at manuscripts from the Vatican Library um, or, or in Berlin, the Staatliche. Um, some servers are better than others. Most of them are excellent, but sometimes this can happen. Um, on my screen, they are opening. In the meantime, I also opened a different collage, uh, something I created for a session last year, uh, where I've opened four copies of Boethius' um, Constellation of Philosophy at the same opening, so all of them at the beginning of book one. Um, so just to show you how, how you can use this type of collage, uh, you can use it in uh, an, an, a training session um, where you still want to keep the functionalities of uh, a viewer, where you want to, to have a dynamic environment. If anyone has managed to open the images and to find a nice uh, similarity between the two manuscripts, uh, feel free to share um, a screen print in the chat. OK, we'll move on to the next uh, assignment. For the next assignment, I would like you to go to the Biblissima portal. So you can see the portal on my screen. So Biblissima is a research center based in Paris, and they work a lot on um, the history of the writ written word. And what we saw earlier, the IIIF collections database is integrated into their general portal, which you can see on the screen now. So if you um, enter a search query here, for instance, dragon, dragon, it works in French and in English, so that's always good. Let's see. I get about 900 results, results for dragon. And then if I'm interested in illuminations, I'll click on illuminations. And then I get a list with results. All of these are uh, miniatures with uh, the theme of a dragon. And here you can immediately see which of them are available in IIIF. So this one is, this one isn't. Now, if I want to use this, I'll open the entry. And then here I can copy the manifest, so I'll click on this copy to clipboard. With this manifest you will open the manuscript, but it will not immediately go to this specific page with a dragon. So what you want to do is to remember that it's folio 204. I'll close this, start here, add resource, enter the manifest. That's this one, I'm opening it. Going to the gallery, it's 204. See all of the manuscripts at the BNF um, are extremely fast. 204 V or recto, I don't remember. Let's see. There, we have our dragon. So this is the first element. And you can continue uh, looking at uh, in the catalog here in the database and find other elements with dragons. So for our assignment number two, I would like you to create your own collage starting at the Biblissima portal. So look for any uh, search query like apocalypse, dragon, Jerusalem. If it's a word that works both in French and English, you'll have more results. Um, and maybe create a collage with three images. 
So I'll give you a few minutes to work on that. Uh, Georgina, for your question, um, you'd have to take a look at the thesaurus that they are using to describe um, iconographical themes. So, last judgment. Maybe you want to try it in French. I'm sure that will give more results. And Lucy, thank you for uh, this, the screenshot that you shared um, from the Liber Floridus. Does anyone want to share their collage, a screenshot of their collage? Let us see what you've been working on. So I've made one with dragons. I hope you can see it. Um, if you want to share your, your collage, you can you can uh, make a, a print of your screen and share it in the chat. And in the meantime, I will move on to the next um, the next trip trick. And that's to create a virtual tour with a tool called Exhibit. So that's what we used on the Monk website. And um, students by Professor Wim Verbal, uh, also here on the call, have uh, made virtual tours for our Monk website as well. So it's a great tool to 
get students to engage with the mater material they have been working on. So let's just take a look at um, some examples. This is a tour created for Monk on the annotations made by scribes at the end of books. So it always starts with a simple introduction. Um, we use images, IIIF images, so I don't have those. I, I mean, I have those images because this one is from our, our collection, but you don't need to have the, the, the images. You just use the manifest URL and it pulls those images directly from the server. Um, and what you have here is a very dynamic environment, so you don't have a static image, but you have this image where you want to focus on a detail, but the viewer, the person who is viewing this, the audience can always zoom out. So you can present the detail that you want to focus on, but you always maintain it in the rich context of a folio that it lives in. That's so important for a miniature, obviously. And if you use this button, you can also access the metadata. So you don't really have to write about the author or the date of the manuscript, etc. All of that information is always available by looking at this. So you can add labels like this. You have a lot of layout options, as you can see here. And it's really nice. They can always zoom out. So that's one example. You can also create quizzes. I cannot show you this one yet because it has one of the items is from the British Library and they've been hacked. So because that item is no longer available for now, the quiz doesn't work really well. So, but you can create a quiz with multiple choice questions. You can pinpoint certain items. Um, you can give um, hyperlinks perhaps to a chapter in a, in a book that you've been discussing. Um, and at the end, when they finish the quiz, there's confetti. So that's really nice. You can also include videos. So for this one, which is on the binding structure of a medieval book, that's a technical arts and crafts topic. So we decided that we wanted to be able to introduce videos for more dynamic um, explanation. So we worked with Exhibit, the people who built this tool, to make this possible. So you could also include maybe uh, a, a comment by a curator, by an expert, by a student, just to give it a more personal touch, a more dynamic touch. Now, how do you do this? You go to the Monk Vercel exhibit app, create an exhibit, create an exhibit anonymously, and then choose um, one of these formats. Slides is what we've seen before. Kiosk is when it plays automatically. Scroll is when you scroll down a page and then quiz is the quiz. Title, just test, test. So this is your introduction. Then I will allow duplication because this is really useful when you want to make an exhibition in several languages. Then you can just copy the skeleton of the exhibition and then just translate the text parts. I'm not a robot. I've read all of this. Create exhibit. Then really important, again, we're not logged in. We don't have an account, so you need to save this URL. That's the only way to return to this, um, to the editor. Uh, side of the exhibition. Then I'll add an item. So this is where I will um, paste uh, IIIF manifest URL. This is the final thing I'll show. Let's just use this one, import. It's in my resource library. If I click on it and say add to exhibit, it appears here. And then I can just browse to whatever detail I'm interested in. There, Augustine. And I'll focus on the part that I want to show. For instance, this. And then as soon as I hit plus, it will um, block this detailed zoom um, and we'll link it to this comment. So test one. Like this, I can um, add another 
part of the same book. Just randomly selecting something here. Tap, tap, tap. Test two. OK, and then maybe add another item. Um, this one imports hep add to exhibit. Yep, I want to focus on this plus oops, test. test. If I want to sh change the order, I just drag and drop. And then if I want to see what it looks like, I hit preview. And there you go. Then if you're ready, if you're happy with this, you can use uh, share. And then here you can see um, the edit or view. So if you want to publish this somewhere, you use view. And you share this and you put it in your craft, your, your content management system. And there you go. And that leaves um, it was three minutes to five, so I will stop here. Okay, thank you for everyone who shared uh, collages in the in the chat.